Hello and welcome back to the course. This course is meant to give you an overview of what modulation is and you will understand the necessity and the advantage of using modulation. We will also learn about the different modulation techniques and starting from the next course we will dig deeper into how exactly modulation works. So a signal can be anything like a sound wave which comes out when you shout, right? And this shout can be heard only up to a certain distance. But for the same wave to travel over a long distance, you will need a technique which adds strength to the signal without disturbing the parameters of the original signal. A message carrying signal has to get transmitted over a distance and for it to establish a reliable communication, it needs to take the help of a high frequency signal which should not affect the original characteristics of the message signal. The characteristics of the message signal, if changed, the message contained in it also alters, right? Hence, it is a must to take care of the message signal. A high frequency signal can travel up to a longer distance without getting affected by external disturbances. We take the help of such high frequency signal, which is called as a carrier signal, to transmit our message signal. Such a process is simply called as modulation. So for a signal that carries information to travel long distances, its strength has to be increased by modulating with a high frequency carrier wave, which doesn't affect the parameters of the modulating signal. The antenna used for transmission had to be very large if modulation was not introduced. The range of communication gets limited as the wave cannot travel to a distance without getting distorted. Following are some of the advantages for implementing modulation in the communication systems. Antenna size gets reduced, no signal mixing occurs, communication range increases, multiplexing of signals occur, adjustments in the bandwidth is allowed, and reception quality improves. As you can see, there are quite a few advantages, isn't it? Now let me explain to you quickly each advantage because just by enumerating them is not enough. We engineers need an explanation of everything, right? The length of the antenna has only to do with the frequency used for transmission or reception. The higher the frequency, the smaller the antenna and vice versa. 2. Avoid mixing of signals. Well, our hearing range starts from 0 Hz and goes up to 20 kHz in a good case. If we want to transmit multiple songs, for example, over the air, like the songs you hear when you turn on the radio, without using the modulation, then all the signals will be in the same frequency range from 0 to 20 kHz, right? And therefore, all the signals get mixed together and the receiver cannot separate them from each other. Hence, if sound signal is used to modulate a different carrier, then they will occupy different slots in the frequency domain, and as a result, modulation avoids mixing of signals. 3. Increase the range of communication. Well, the frequency of baseband signal is low, and the low frequency signals cannot travel long distance when they are transmitted. They get heavily attenuated. The attenuation reduces with increase in frequency of the transmitted signal, and they travel longer distance. And the modulation process increases the frequency of the signal to be transmitted, so therefore it increases the range of communication. Multiplexing is possible. Uh, multiplexing is a process in which two or more signals can be transmitted over the same communication channel simultaneously. This is possible only with modulation. The multiplexing allows the same channel to be used by many signals. Hence, many TV channels can use the same frequency range without getting mixed with each other or different frequency signals can be transmitted at the same time. 5. Improves quality of reception. Well, with frequency modulation and the digital communication techniques, the effect of noise is reduced to a great extent. This improves quality of reception. Alright, so now that we know the advantages of modulation, let's see the signals in the modulation process. Following are the three types of signals in the modulation process. The first one is the message or modulating signal, which is nothing else but the signal which contains a message to be transmitted, and this is called as a message signal. 
it is a baseband signal which has to undergo the process of modulation to get transmitted, right? Hence, it is, called, it is also called as the modulating signal. The second signal is the carrier signal, which is a high frequency signal which has a certain phase, frequency and amplitude, but contains no information. It is an empty signal, it is just used to carry the signal to the receiver after modulation. The resultant signal after the process of modulation is called as the modulated signal. This signal is a combination of the modulating signal and the carrier signal. Alright, I hope you got a good overview about modulation and I decided to separate the part where I will talk about the types of modulation because otherwise this course would have been too long and types of modulation deserves anyway a separate course. So thank you for watching and see you in the next course.